Alright, if you survive parts one, two, and three of this video series, you'll hopefully survive this one. <laughs> this is where it gets really complicated, uh, but hopefully you'll take the uh, knowledge you gained from the first videos and be able to apply them to what are called dwarf signals, or the politically correct term, <laughs> low-mast signals. Now, these are the short signals that you'll typically see in rail yards, but sometimes on the main lines. Uh, these are either one or two lights and are read in a similar way to the tall mast lights described in parts one, two, and three. Now, if you haven't watched all three of those yet, I'd highly recommend watching them first as they will all tie in to how to read these dwarf signals. We first covered the basic three-headed signal, and in part two, we knocked off one or two of the lights to save on cost and showed how to read those lights. The dwarf signals, being of the one or two light variety, are going to be read in a similar fashion. Now in part three, we introduced two more speeds uh, and advanced signals, what we typically call two and at signals. For example, clear to stop or medium to clear. You remember in part two, we described the one and two headed lights as being read exactly the same way as the three headed light system, but the red placeholder lights had been removed. The single light was equivalent to the top light with the bottom light two lights removed, and the two light signal was equivalent to the top two lights with the bottom light removed. The dwarf signals are almost always used on a low speed track. So the dwarf signals are read in a similar fashion, except because they almost never indicate high speed, we read them starting from the bottom. The way to remember it is, it starts low as it is a low mast signal. The single light is the equivalent of the bottom light on the three light signal. Two lights is the equivalent of the bottom two lights on the three light signal. With that in mind, and knowing your signals already, Take a guess as to what this signal is. If you said slow to clear, you are correct. Remember, this is the equivalent to the bottom or slow speed head on the three light signal with the other two presumed to be red placeholders. That would be a green light on the slow speed signal indicating slow speed. It's green indicating that the next signal will be a clear signal. Well, what about this signal? If you said restricting signal, you got it right. And this was one that actually continually tripped me up when I was learning the signals. If the bottom light on the three head system is yellow and the other two are red, that is a restricting signal. The dwarf light represents the bottom light with the upper two lights presumably red, presumably red placeholders, uh, which have just been removed. That would make this a restricting signal. If it was a flashing yellow, that would mean slow to stop. It's read the exact same as the three-headed signal with a flashing yellow on the slow speed light. If we have two lights, then we can display other speeds and approach signals, just like the three-headed system. Medium to limited. Just envision that that top light is there, but it's red. Medium to stop. Limited to slow. Remembering that this signal is a slow to stop signal, you remember how we could upgrade the slow to stop signal on a three light signal by simply throwing on a DV plate. It's the exact same thing with the dwarf signal. A DV plate mounted on a light upgrades a slow to stop signal into a diverging to stop signal. A slow to clear signal gets upgraded to a diverging to clear signal. We can also upgrade the medium signals to limited signals in the exact same way we upgraded the three light system. We can either flash the medium speed light or add an L plate. This is limited to clear. Limited to slow. 
limited to stop, medium to limited. Now, just to throw a nice monkey wrench into everything, sometimes these low mass signals are used on the main track and thus they need to indicate high speed. Now how you recognize those ones is with this rule of thumb. If the top light is solid yellow in any combination with a yellow or green light, then the low mast signal represents the top two lights of the three light system. So for instance, this would be a clear to medium light. It would be the equivalent of a yellow over green over red this would be a clear to slow. This signal is clear to limited. Remembering that a two signal can be upgraded to an upgraded medium signal, this would be a clear to limited. We've still got a combination of solid yellow on top and yellow or green on the second light so the L-plate has upgraded what would normally be a medium signal to a limited signal. In like fashion, a clear to slow signal can be upgraded to by the DV plate into a clear to diverging signal. Now there is one oddball light left and it's actually a really easy one to remember. If both lights are solid green, that is not a medium to medium signal. That is a clear signal. According to the Canadian Rail Operating Rules, you are not allowed to display a medium to medium signal on a dwarf signal, as the double green has been reserved as a clear signal. Now, while it is not in the Canadian Rail Operating Rules, there are double green lights in use in Canada where the top two lights are both green. This is a clear signal. You remember that a clear to medium signal with a green light on top had to have the medium green light on the bottom head, not the middle one. So in that regard, this signal is also representative of the top two lights on a three light system. All right, let's run you through the paces with a signals test. What signal is this? If you said medium to slow, you are correct. It represented the lower two lights of the three light signal. What signal is this? Restricting signal, that's right. Solid yellow on the slow speed head is a restricting signal. And this one? Medium to limited is the correct answer. This one? Aha! This is one of those tricky ones. Remember the rule of thumb. If it's solid yellow on top and anything except the red on the bottom, any combination is red as if it were the top two lights on the three light system. So this is a clear to limited signal. And this one? Yeah, this is the other tricky one. This is a clear signal. If both lights are solid green, it's the unusual one, which represents a clear signal. One final thing. If you are qualifying as a conductor on rail lines in Canada, you have to pass a signals test and get 100% on it. Not a single one wrong. Now, that sounds simpler than it is. Because clarity and understanding are important, you are required to not just provide the correct signal name, but you are also required to recite the Canadian Rail Operating Rules definition of that signal, verbatim. You are not even allowed a spelling mistake or a single letter wrong. For example, slow to clear, proceed, slow speed, passing signal and through turnouts. If you have a speed to a speed signal, such as medium to slow, you write it, medium to slow, proceed, medium speed, passing signal and through turnouts, 
approaching next signal at slow speed. If you wrote medium to slow, proceed medium speed, passing signal and through turnouts, approaching the next signal at slow speed, you got it wrong. If you have an advance clear to limited, it's written advance clear to limited, proceed, approaching second signal at limited speed. If you write advance duh, clear to limited, proceed, approaching second signal at limited speed, that's wrong, you failed the test. You added one letter. There is patterns to the verbiage which you learn. Uh, one tip that was given to us by our instructor was for the advance signals. In football, you have an advance pass. If it's an advance signal, look for the pass. Proceed, approaching second signal. So, advance clear to medium would be proceed, approaching second signal at medium speed. If it's a speed to clear signal, such as a medium to clear, slow to clear, uh, diverging to clear, or limited to clear, it's simply that word again, proceed, because you are going to pass this signal, right? Then the speed you're supposed to proceed at, and the same instruction for every single one of these signals, and that is passing signal and through turnouts. So, medium to clear would be proceed medium speed, passing signal and through turnouts. Now, some of them are really long, and you only have 30 seconds on the test to identify and write out these definitions. So, write out the aspect, the, the signal itself. Get that down there, because you may run out of time writing the definition before the next signal comes up in the test. Now, you can go back and finish writing out the definition later. Take, for example, uh, limited to limited. The definition is a mix of the approach signal definitions and the speed to clear definitions. So it starts off again with that word, proceed, then the speed we're supposed to proceed at. Proceed, limited speed. Where do you have to stay at that speed? Proceed, limited speed, passing signal and through turnouts. And finally, what we're going to do after we pass the signal and turnouts. Approaching next signal at limited speed. So the definition is proceed, limited speed, passing signal and through turnouts, approaching next signal at limited speed. All right, thanks for everyone who left comments and questions. Uh, I might try to put together a video in the future uh, answering some of those questions that were left. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video series, and thanks for sharing it. You can share it, of course, easily with the share button down below, and I'll provide links to the previous three videos uh, here. <laughs> Have a great day.